let's uh, try to understand uh, what are the building blocks of invertible matrices. Okay, so we we know a criterion uh, when a matrix is invertible. What is the inverse of a times b, or what is the inverse of a transpose? But we want to uh, now uh, understand uh, how to obtain invertible matrices. Yeah. What are the components? What are the building blocks of invertible matrices? Okay, identity matrix is invertible. That is clear uh, because it's uh, I, the inverse of identity matrix is identity matrix itself. So we want to now, I want to give you some simple examples of invertible matrices. These are called elementary matrices. And we will see that all invertible matrices are composed of elementary matrices in the sense that any invertible matrix is a product of finitely many elementary matrices. Okay. This is uh, if and only if criterion, it's a necessary insufficient condition that a matrix is invertible if and only if it is a product of elementary matrices. Okay. So in this sense, elementary matrices are building blocks of all invertible matrices. Okay. So that's, that's what we want to understand now. So uh, what is an elementary matrix? So an elementary matrix is a matrix obtained from identity matrix by an elementary row operation. There are three types of elementary row operations I introduced. So apply those three elementary row operations to an identity matrix, and we get three types of elementary matrices. So what were the elementary row operation? You can exchange two rows, that is one. Then you can multiply a row by a non-zero number. That is another elementary row operation. Then another, uh, the third operation was you can multiply a row by a non-zero number and add to another row. So if you perform these three operations on identity matrix, you will get three types of elementary matrices. So let's look at what they, they look like. So the matrix obtained from identity matrix by interchanging ith and zth row is called elementary matrix of type one. And it is like this. So the, the, there, is, there are two rows here. Yeah. So we started with identity matrix, but we interchange ith row with jth row. And here I'm saying i is less than j. Right, so the ith row is transposed to it is it is exchanged with the jth row. Then I get this matrix T i j, T for transposition. We are interchanging the ith row with jth row. This is called a transposition, and so we denote this matrix by T i j. That is the first type of elementary matrix. Yeah, this is an invertible matrix. Okay, this is an invertible matrix. So in order to see why this is invertible matrix. Let me just look at an example. So we understand matrices by their action. So suppose I have a two by two matrix and this is the T12. That means I interchange the first row and second row. This is my T12. What is the action of T12 on E1? Yeah, that is the first column. Action of T12 on E2. This is the second column. So this is E1, this is E2, and this is E1. So if, if this uh, matrix is obtained by interchanging uh, the uh, first row with the second row, then you see that E1 is mapping to E2 under the action of T12, and E2 is mapping to E1 under the action of T12. So E1 and E2 are being interchanged by the action of T12. Okay. So if I take T12 and multiply by any matrix, multiply by any matrix, okay, what happens? This is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0, A, B, C, D. So use matrix multiplication. And so 0, 1 times A, C is C. 0, 1 times B, D is D. And uh, 1, 0 uh, times A, C is A. And 1, 0 times B, D is B. So you see that uh, 
the first first row was AB and that has been transposed here, and the second row CD has been moved to the first row. So T12, when it is acting on a two by two matrix, it is interchanging the first row and second row, and this is this is also true in general. So if I take Tij and multiply by uh, multiply Tij with A, so Tij is a n by n matrix. So in order to multiply this matrix A must be an n by n matrix. So this is this matrix is obtained from A simply by interchanging ith row and jth row. So this becomes jth row and this becomes ith row and other rows become the same. So Tij is obtained from A simply by interchanging ith row of A with the jth row of A. Okay, that is the action. So if I if I uh, So if I multiply Tij with Tij itself, what happens? I will get identity because uh, Tij Tij acting on Tij will interchange the ith row and jth column of Tij. So so I will get back the identity matrix again. Yeah. Okay. So this says that Tij is its own inverse. So it's an invertible matrix. Yeah. This Tij is invertible matrix. Tij times A is the matrix obtained from A by interchanging ith row and jth row of A. Okay. So therefore, if I operate Tij, uh, multiply Tij with Tij, I will get identity matrix, and therefore Tij uh, Tij is invertible, and it's its own inverse. This should be I here. Yeah. It should be I. So Tij is invertible matrix. It is its own inverse because Tij square turned out to be identity. Yeah. Now let's look at second type. The matrix obtained from identity matrix adding M times Ri to Rj. Uh, okay, that is called uh, Tij M. So Tij was the the matrix obtained from identity matrix by interchanging ith row and jth row, but Tij M uh, means that I am multiplying uh, ith row by M and adding to the jth row. So then I get this Tij M matrix. Okay, and uh, the action of Tij on M. Uh, if, uh, uh, on on a arbitrary matrix uh, is again uh, easy to understand in the way we did this for T one two we can uh, see what is the action of T i j on on a given matrix so if I if I multiply T i j uh, m on a matrix this is the matrix obtained from a by adding m times ith row to jth row. Yeah, that is the action of Tij m. So therefore, if I take Tij m and then uh, take Tij minus m, okay, this will be identity. Because I am reversing the operation. So this shows that Tij m is invertible. This is invertible for any m. M could be zero also. So T i j zero is just the identity matrix. Okay. So this is the second type of elementary matrix, which is obtained by adding m times i th row to the j th row of identity matrix, and I get this T i j m. Okay. So uh, this is called an elementary matrix of type two, and as I as I wrote, the T i j m times T i j minus m is identity. So, so therefore, inverse of Tijm is uh, so inverse of Tijm. Inverse of Tijm equal to Tij minus m. Okay, right. this is the second type of elementary matrix. Let's look at the third type of elementary matrix. This is obtained. 
from identity by the elementary row operation m times ri where m is not equal to 0 okay m is not equal to 0 here okay and this is an invertible matrix what is the inverse it's a diagonal matrix and we know that if if i have a diagonal matrix then uh, then to to find the inverse uh, we 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 simply uh, multiply this by the matrix where i th row has 1 over m in it so ti m times ti 1 over m that will be identity so therefore ti m is invertible and ti m inverse equal to ti 1 over m so m is not equal to 0 this is the third type of elementary matrix so ti m is called elementary matrix of type 3 and its inverse is ti of 1 over m okay yeah so i described three uh, matrices uh, which are called elementary matrices and i i'll repeat the first type was uh, interchanging ith row with jth row. So take identity matrix, interchange ith row with jth row, I get the elementary matrix of first type. Elementary matrix of second type, I add a multiple of ith row to the jth row of identity matrix, that is second type of identity matrix. The third type of identity matrix is I multiply a row by a non-zero scalar m, that is tim. Okay? And all these three matrices are invertible, now here is a theorem, an elementary matrix is invertible, therefore, and the inverse is also an elementary matrix of the same type. Yeah, TIM inverse was TI of one over M. So it is an elementary matrix of same type. TI, uh, then TIJ, okay. uh, TIJ, uh, in, inverse of TIJ was TIJ uh, itself. So that, that was an elementary matrix of the same type. And then we, we proved, uh, we proved, uh, the uh, that the second elementary matrix Tij M, yeah, its inverse is Tij minus M. So that is again an elementary matrix of the same type where M is replaced by minus M. So every elementary matrix has an inverse. The inverse is a elementary matrix of the same type. Okay, the parameter changes. M changes to minus M. Uh, if if it is the second elementary matrix and M changes to one over M, if it is third elementary matrix. Okay. So uh, this we have proved that an elementary matrix is invertible and the inverse is also an elementary matrix of the same type. Okay. Now let's let's prove uh, a very interesting uh, characterization of uh, what are the building blocks of elementary uh, of invertible matrices. So let A be a square matrix. Then uh, the following are equivalent. A can be reduced to identity matrix by a sequence of elementary row operations. Now, this fact says that the row canonical form of A is the identity matrix. We observe, well, I didn't prove this, but you can read the proof, that row canonical form of any matrix is unique. So if, um, if I can reduce a matrix, square matrix, by elementary row operations to identity matrix, then identity matrix is the row canonical form. Okay, so this statement says that uh, the row canonical form of matrix, a, this square matrix, is identity matrix, which means that by a sequence of elementary row operations, I can uh, change A to identity matrix. That is the first statement. This statement is equivalent to A is a product of elementary matrices. Yeah, A is a product of elementary matrices. Then A is invertible. This is equivalent to A is invertible. And fourth statement is a x equal to zero has only trivial solution. A x equal to zero has only the trivial solution. So these four statements are characterizations of elementary matrices. Okay. A can be reduced to identity by a sequence of elementary row operations. That means the row canonical form of A is identity matrix. Second statement is there is a product of elementary matrices. So this means that invertible matrices are 
built out of elementary matrices in the sense that the only way to get invertible matrices is by multiplying certain number of elementary matrices. Yeah. The last statement has to do with the uh, nature of solutions of a homogeneous system of linear equations. So if A is a square matrix and AX equal to zero has only trivial solution, uh, then we can say A is invertible matrix and vice versa. Yeah. So these four statements are equal. Let us uh, give a proof. So when I say that four statements are equivalent, I need to show that they are equivalent to each other. That means any statement is equivalent to any other statement. But uh, we, we prove this by proving that uh, the first statement implies the second statement, second statement implies the third, third implies the fourth, and fourth implies the one. And that will prove that all the four statements are equivalent. So let us prove that if if identity matrix is the row canonical form of A, uh, then A is a product of elementary matrices. Okay. So what is the meaning? How do we obtain uh, row canonical form? Uh, we simply by performing elementary row operations. Okay. So if if uh, if I, I apply apply an elementary row operation, elementary row operation on A and I get the matrix A1. Then A1 is obtained by multiplying an elementary matrix on the left to A. Right? There are three types of row operations and I showed you that they all can be uh, affected by pre-multiplying A on the left uh, by an elementary matrix. So if I perform an elementary row operation, then and I get A1, then A1 is simply product of an elementary matrix time and A. I, I multiply, do another elementary row operation. That means I pre-multiply E2 with A1 and I get A2, but this is equal to E2, E1, A, okay, and so on. Finally, I get I, the identity matrix. So it's clear that this identity matrix is obtained by multiplying A on the left by a certain number of elementary matrices. Okay. Now this equation, this equation says that A is inverted. Why is this is so? Because I know the inverses of elementary matrices. So I simply multiply by their inverses. Okay. So I multiply by inverse. Uh, let me. Uh, so suppose I let us take a simple case: e2, e1, e2, e3, e3, e2, e1, a equal to identity. And I want to find the inverse of A. Yeah. So multiply by inverse of E3. Then multiply by inverse of E2. Then multiply by inverse of E1. So I have to do the same thing here. So E1 inverse, E2 inverse, E3 inverse. This becomes identity. And therefore, A equal to E1 inverse, E2 inverse and A3 inverse. So A has become a product of elementary matrices. Yeah, that's what it says, that uh, if, if uh, the elementary row operations which are used to get identity matrix from A, then uh, A becomes a product of elementary inverses of the elementary matrices of the same type. So in this Gauss elimination method to get, get the row canonical form, yeah, of A, if A is invertible, uh, then it, it says that uh, identity matrix is the row canonical form. Yeah, and this says that A is a product of uh, the inverses of the elementary matrices, which were used to perform the elementary row operations on A. So we have proved A is a product of elementary matrices. If the, the canonical row canonical form of A is identity matrix, 
then A is a product of elementary matrices. Now, once A is a product of elementary matrices, then it is invertible because we, we showed that inverse of invertible, uh, the product of invertible matrices is invertible. Therefore, uh, A is invertible. Yeah. Then three implies, uh, C implies D. If A is invertible and then AX equal to zero, if I have AX equal to zero and A is invertible, I just multiply by A inverse. Yeah. And this is equal to zero. And therefore, X must be zero because this is identity. So AX equal to zero will have only a trivial solution. So C implies D. That is all right. Now let's prove D implies A. Okay. So we we are assuming that uh, I have I have a, a system of n linear equations in n unknowns, and it's a homogeneous system of linear equation, and it has only a trivial solution, namely x equal to zero. Yeah. Then I want to prove that A can be reduced to identity matrix by a sequence of elementary row operations. So one statement is about solvability of a homogeneous system of equations, which says that there is a unique solution, namely the zero solution. The second fact is about the row canonical form. Yeah. That the row canonical form of A, a must be identity matrix. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so we, in order to prove this, we first observe that a square matrix is in row canonical form is either the identity matrix or its bottom row is zero. You know, the row, if a matrix is in row canonical form, then the zero rows must occur at the bottom. Yeah. So if the row canonical form is not the identity matrix, then there must be a zero row at the bottom. Yeah. The so square matrix in row canonical form is either the identity matrix or because above every pivot and below that pivot, all the entries are zero. So imagine uh, I have a square matrix and it is in row canonical form. Yeah. Then uh, the number of pivots, if it is n by n matrix, the number of pivots is either n or it is less than n. Suppose it is equal to n. That means every column has to have a pivot. But the pivots are sliding from left to right as you go from one column to another. And therefore, if there are n pivots, the this matrix has to be identity matrix. If there are less than n pivots, that means the number of non-zero rows is less than n, and therefore there is, the bottom row must be equal to zero. Okay. That's what it says, that if I have square matrix, then the row canonical form has these two possibilities. Either it is identity matrix or the bottom row is zero. Okay. So suppose, uh, so I want to prove that if AX equal to zero has only trivial solution, then A can be reduced to identity matrix by a sequence of elementary row operations. So suppose, uh, assume to the contrary, that A cannot be reduced to identity matrix by elementary row operations. If A can't be reduced to identity matrix by elementary row operations, then, there, uh, then the row canonical form must have zero row at the bottom. Yeah, it must have zero row. So there is a zero row here. And there are other entries. This is my row canonical form. But when I take the row canonical form and set up the system of linear equation, this system and AX equal to zero, they have same set of solutions. They will have same set of solutions. But now let us understand whether A prime X, okay, A prime X equal to zero, that means the bottom row is zero. So number of pivotal variables is less than n. So there is a free variable. Yeah. There is a free variable. Once there is a free variable, there are infinitely many solutions. So we have arrived at a contradiction. Our assumption was AX equal to zero has only the trivial solution. But but if, if A can't be reduced to uh, identity matrix by elementary row operations, then its row canonical form must have zero row at the bottom. Once it has zero row at the bottom, there are fewer than uh, n uh, pivotal variables, so there is a free variable. Once there is a free variable, then a prime x equal to zero has a non-trivial solution. That is a contradiction. Okay. So, any questions on this? Is a tricky proof. Uh, any questions on this proof? All right. 
Okay, so this this uh, this theorem actually leads to a uh, algorithm to find inverse of a matrix. So far, we don't know how to find inverse of the matrix. Yeah, let us see that this gives an algorithm to find inverse of a matrix. And linear algebra is about algorithms for linear equations. We have to find. We know Gauss elimination method. That's an efficient method to solve system of linear equations. And then we are introduced to finding inverse of a matrix. So uh, if uh, if AX equal to B is our system of linear equations and A is uh, A is A is invertibles. Yeah. If my system of linear equations is this and A is n by n and A is invertible, then if I had access to A inverse, I just multiply. And that says that A inverse B, that says that X is equal to A inverse B. So in one shot, I find all the solutions. Okay. If A was invertible, I can, and I have access to A inverse, then I can find the solutions if it is, uh, if it is uh, N variables and N equations. So it's it's important to have uh, access to inverse of a matrix when I have a system of linear equations. Uh, by if if we have an efficient algorithm to find inverse, then we will have efficient algorithm to find solutions of a system of equations also. Okay. So here is a consequence. Suppose I have n by n matrix, and uh, and and uh, b there is a b so that b a is identity or a b is identity. Then A is invertible and A inverse is equal to B. Remember, we, we had uh, in the definition of invertible matrix, we had imposed that there's a matrix B so that A, B is identity and B, A is also identity. But now we are saying that only one of these conditions has to be satisfied for a matrix to be invertible. Okay. Right? So let us prove that if uh, it is enough to prove one of the uh, equations, B A is identity or A B is identity. Okay. If A B is invertible, then A and B are both invertible. If the product is invertible, we proved that if A and B are invertible, the product is invertible. But now we are saying that if A times B is invertible, then, then both A and B are invertible. So let's prove that once I have one equation, B A equal to identity, then for any x, B A x is x, yeah, because B A is identity. So B A x must be equal to x, yeah. So if so, how to prove that a matrix is uh, how to prove that a matrix is invertible? We just check that A x equal to zero has a trivial solution. So suppose A x equal to zero, yeah, uh, then x equal to zero. Suppose uh, because. Uh, uh, so, so suppose C is the inverse, then C is equal to B A times C, and that is B A C, and that is equal to so B is B is the inverse. Okay, yeah. If A B is invertible, then its inverse is D. Then A B D is equal to A B D equal to identity, and therefore A is invertible, and so B is also invertible. Yeah. So, uh, so once product is invertible, the factors are also invertible. Suppose I have a square matrix and this is invertible. In order to solve this system A x equal to B, we transform the augmented matrix into I C by elementary row operations. Once A is invertible, then I, I showed that its row canonical form is identity matrix. So uh, when I when I uh, convert A into identity matrix, I get a augmented matrix I C. Okay, I C. So. Uh, <clears throat> Ax equal to b, uh, if and only if ix equal to c, and uh, so for every x, yeah, uh, every x, uh, therefore ac equal to b, yeah, right. So therefore c is the unique solution of ax equal to b, as I explained earlier. So this observation is the basis of important method to find inverse of a square matrix. So I think our time is over and uh, we will we will continue uh, there are uh, the the last topic uh, in in this chapter is finding algorithm of uh, for for inverse over matrix which is called gauss jordan method 
I will cover this uh, next time uh, on Wednesday and then begin uh, with the next topic of determinants of uh, matrices. Any questions? Okay, so thank you all. Uh, we'll, we'll meet on uh, next Monday. And please, please register in SAFE because from next week we start the quizzes. The first quiz will be a mock quiz based on assignment one. And we will not add marks, but it is, it is for practice. We have to learn uh, how to use SAFE and uh, how to uh, upload your answers, whether they are multiple choice or uh, descriptive. A, a quiz can have descriptive questions and we will ask you to upload. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much. So you may stop the recording.